Hello everybody, this is Psy Spy, and today we are, give me a second, make sure everything's up online, there we go. We are going to be watching and playing a game called Randall's Monday. This is a game about, well, it's basically Groundhog's Day for its own uh, sort of thing, but with lots of geeky culture stuff. So that is definitely one thing you'll want to be keeping your eye on. I'm going to drop my volume down just a little bit here. There we go. Because I was topping out the bar just there a little bit. And I'm thinking this is looking all good and crispy. I've got that up top, got that down there at the bottom. I am all sorts of good right now. Okay, new game. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only inhabited by freaks and geeks, but also a dwarf named Carlos. A journey to the gumdrop house on Lollipop Lane, whose boundaries depend on your own mental health. That's a signpost up ahead. Pay me what you owe me, or kiss your legs goodbye. Life yeah, that is a, a little bit of everything nice little reference. Every one of us. Some nice surprises. Tragic losses. New allies. Betrayals. We all wish we could go back and change some of the mistakes we've made in our lives. But what happens when the man who's been given that opportunity is a sociopathic kleptomaniac good for nothing moron dude honestly he never comes out of his room i haven't seen him for like six months i don't even remember what his face looks like ha huh. he doesn't even come out to go to the bathroom no i'd imagine that's what all the buckets are for ah, i bet he's dead Nah, he uses growls to communicate. Growls? Randall, you're not talking about our wedding present, are you? Relax, honey, we're talking about his roommate. Yeah, plus it looks like my present won't be able to growl anyway. Science is still pretty far from being able to create a rapping pig. I'll have to think of something else, man. Don't worry, dude, it's the thought that counts. Guys, I don't want any scenes at my wedding. Is that asking too much? Scenes? What do you mean by scenes? You know exactly what I mean. We've been friends for a long time now, and I know what your idea of an unforgettable experience is. Let's see here. Color nuns, color nun directions to a lesbian bar. You mean I put Matt's grandmother's dentures on eBay? Then by the time we tried to summon Freddie Mercury's drunk ghost, I'm gonna go with the nuns. Like what? When I gave that carload of nuns directions to a lesbian bar? <laughs> <laughs> that was quite unforgettable. It was, and I'd be lying if I said it wasn't funny, but I'm telling you, I don't want any kind of weird stuff at my wedding. It's gonna be the most important day of my life, and I don't want you guys to ruin it. Well, it's your call, but everybody knows Matt can be really romantic when he wants to. Everybody? How come I don't then? Oh, come on, Sally. I tell you I love you almost every day. I'm super romantic. Yeah, sure. Do you mean when you belch it, or when you say it in binary code? No, he means when he belches it in binary code. Matt always gives it his all. You can tell by the way he almost gags when he's doing it. Oh, by the way... Where are you going on your honeymoon? Well, I think Italy would be really romantic. The Big Ben, Eiffel Tower, the Pantheon. I just love to go there. Oh, Sally, I told you, all that stuff is in Germany. Libya is still my top choice. I'm dying to see the pyramids. <laughs> okay. And, um, yeah, the, char the person who plays the voice for him is... Randall. What are we drinking? Or Jeff Anderson. Uh, some kind of beer, I think. Yeah, something like that. I miss the grog era. Those were the days. You bet. 
So, are you guys gonna live in Matt's place? Yep. Well, that was the plan, but I'm already looking for a new place. What? You want to move out? Come on, my mother just got us the Stovomatic 9000. I don't get it. I'm going to the restroom. Can you get us two more beers when you're done, honey? More booze? That way, you'll look even hotter. Just promise me you won't puke this time. Hey, come on. You can't promise that. Sally, if we're getting married, you have to trust me. Besides, I don't like puking anymore. I feel scammed because, you know, I pay for the stuff that comes out of me. Okay, it's just that, you know, I thought we'd be doing something more romantic to celebrate our engagement. <laughs> you know what would be really romantic? Let me guess. Another round? Sally, how could you know me so well? Dude, check this out. It's the engagement ring I got for Sally. What do you think? It sure looks expensive. Well, it's your money. That's just the best part. It cost me a Dorito. That is impossible, Matt. You stole it, you can tell me. Sometimes I take stuff that's not mine, too. I know, everybody knows. But I didn't steal it, dude. I got it from a bum that lives around my neighborhood. Then I think he likes you. It was really weird. The guy was all out of his mind. He was going on and on about how this ring ruined his life, that it was cursed, that it would destroy the world. <laughs> Maybe that was a metaphor. Dude, you just gave him some Doritos and he gave you a ring? Yeah, I think he likes you. Come on, Randall. The point is that I took it to a guy who told me that it's 780.563 karat gold. And somehow it's sapphire, ruby, diamond, and emerald plated. It also cuts glass, jumpstarts cars. Really? May I hold it? Dude, you're my best friend. That's why you're here. But I'll never let this ring near those kleptomaniac paws of yours. You'll never forgive me for the robo-calculator incident, right? We were just kids. No, I don't want anyone touching this ring. Whatever. I'm sure she'll love it. Looks nice. Nice? Nice? This ring is better than nice. It's the most fantastic, wondrous ring in the world. The more I look at it, the more I want to keep it for myself. What are you gonna keep for yourself? The, uh, a uh, puke, sweetie. No throwing up today. Oh. Well, here we go, guys. Last round. <laughs> Five rounds later. Garbage everywhere as far as the eye can see. And it's not a problem that it is literally starting to stink. I'm afraid something will attack me if I go near his door. I really think he's dead. No, dude. I told you. He uses growls to communicate. Guys! We're supposed to be celebrating our engagement. Why are we talking about Randall's roommate again? Shh, don't worry <laughs> about it, honey. That freak is dead! Where are you getting married? I really love St. Gilbert's Catholic Church, but Matt heard there's a three-headed monkey buried in the catacombs. Now it gives me the creeps. Really? I can't think about anything else! <laughs> you remind me of a couple of alcoholic hamsters I had when we were in school. They had a very long life, remember, Matt? I just hope we don't end up like those poor rodents. Dude, don't make me feel bad about that. <laughs> I don't even know how they got in the oven. I guess they were dazed and confused from all the stress and alcohol. May they rest in peace. <laughs> I... I think I drank enough for today. What? Honey, you should stop too. Me? Why? Matt. I don't like it when each of your eyes is looking off in a different direction at the same time. Really? I love that. <laughs> Seriously, Matt. That's enough for today. I'm okay. He's okay. <laughs> Yeah.
Brandon. Oh, great. Brandon, can you go check on him? I don't want him ruining another pair of my shoes. I told you, you can't keep him from puking. It's like, I don't know, mutant power or something. I just hope he slows down on the alcohol after the wedding. Oh, I'm sure after a month or two of marriage bliss, he'll move on to something stronger. I don't know, heroin, meth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> classic Matt. Hey, Matt! Should I grab Father Roy to perform an exorcism? You seem to have a little projectile vomiting going on. <laughs> Let's see here. Well, at least you don't throw up lying on your back anymore. Well, I'm a grown-up now. I can't remember what we used to call that one. Can you believe it? Wait, I think I got it. One, two, three, splash? You're not even close. Ah, dude, damn it. What was it? Vesuvius Matt! Vesuvius Matt stops people in their tracks. That's it! <laughs> uh, let's see here. Dude, you know what I think about you drinking that much. I know, dude! That a party's not a party till Matt Griffin starts puking it up. Exactly. But I'm kind of worried about you, you know? You don't even chew your food anymore. I think I just saw a whole nugget. You know, I saw this documentary about pigeons the other day and the way they're ahead of us. They just gulp everything down and let their stomachs do the rest. Well, they also hang out on telephone wires and shit on people's heads. You gonna do that too? <laughs> Look, Matt, I love to spend my entire paycheck on booze just like the next guy. But you might want to show a little self-control, huh? I know, dude. Life's taught me a valuable lesson today. Really? What's that? You should always check for homeless people behind the dumpster before you start puking. Um, how pissed is Sally? Come on, she just cares about you. Me, on the other hand, all I do is watch you laugh in the face of death every day. And believe me, death is the one who really must be pissed at you. Okay, I think I'm done here. Wanna hug it out? Matt, I don't wanna hug you when you're not covered in vomit. Why would I wanna hug you when you are? Yeah, I know how you roll. One, no hugs. Two, no sharing. Three, no talking to strangers. And you forgot the most important. No altering the space-time continuum. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Vesuvius Matt is up and about again. Follow me, Randall, and don't lose me, cause this night's gonna be legendary. Um, Matt, you dropped Okay, so it looks like you got the ring now. Did you hear that, Randall? I think it's arrived! Hurry up! Hey, honey! I'm feeling much better now. Excellent! Now you can explain to me what the hell this woman is doing here with that animal at my wedding shower! Yeah, um... Now listen, sweetie, um... <laughs> Matt, please, not now. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to announce that the donkey has arrived. Let the magic commence. <laughs> Another reference. 
God, I love the references. Oh boy, what a night. Alcohol, puking, blood, and there was some praying too. <laughs> well, I better get moving. I think I'm supposed to be working today. Working? I know you had a job. Ah, it's that devilish invention that reminds me I'm still alive every morning. I hate you, you damn piece of junk. Why would I take the alarm clock with me? Okay, we got posters. Now that's what I call culture. Well, there's that game. I got here. Just a box full of junk. There's nothing useful in there. Nah, I don't need that right now. Ah, stupid arcade machine. That thing ruined my education, my love life, and my depth perception. I'm not that crazy. I quit playing that machine years ago. I only keep it for its ornamental value, and because I can't move it. Okay. Yeah, but it's uh, Randall Hicks, which is a combination of the two. here that I can snag. Nope, oh, that's it that's in here. Hallway, Mortimer's room. Mortimer! Ah, screw him. There we got those shelves. So, uh, what's in the shelves? Lots of stuff, but nothing useful. Can see the street from here. Okay. The room. I'm not gonna open the window now. There's only noise out there. Okay. The remote. Now is not a good time. Okay. We got a newspaper. Ooh, hot news. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose a big fucking big television. Alrighty. Uh, what's over here? I don't think dressing up in green and going on a quest to find the Triforce is going to be of any help. At least <laughs> not at the moment. I'm not cleaning that. That's Mortimer's job. It's always Mortimer's job. Okay. I think it was, oh, what's in the fridge? No can do, amigo. There's some kind of crust around the door that makes it impossible to open. Heh. <laughs> what do we got there? Mortimer! I'm off to work! Oh man, is that my hangover? Or is death knocking at my door again? Whoever you are, I just want you to know I have my father's gun and a scorching case Randall of herpes. Hicks. Cut the shit and open the door! Mr. Marconi? Well, it sure made publishers clearing house. Open this door! Oh, whew. I'm so glad it's you. But please, don't ever do that again. God damn it, Hicks. Do what? Scare me like that. I nearly turned my Fruit of the Looms into a fudge factory. Damn, Cannelloni. Did you just call me Cannelloni? Aw, oh, come on, listen. I've had a terrible night. I swear somebody was whispering in my ear over and over that I'm cursed. And I'm fairly certain I pissed in my closet again. Ah, oh, do you know what day it is? No, no. Are you gonna try and get that ferret out of the plumbing? 
Because I don't know if I can stomach staring at your hairy ass crack all day. Very funny. Your rent takes. As usual, you're late. I don't see my money. Neither do I, Mr. Marconi. But come on, it's only a couple of days late. No big deal. You owe me three months. Oh. Well, there must have been some kind of problem with the paperwork. Damn bureaucracy. Let me talk to my financial advisor. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Ah, Hicks, you need a financial advisor like I need ballerina shoes. That's lame. Well, what about the time I tried to pay you in gold coins? Those were bottle caps painted gold. Took me three weeks to get the paint off my hands. Mr. Marconi, I've been meaning to talk to you, but I don't think you're gonna like what I'm about to say. I'm sure I won't. I have the feeling we're growing <laughs> apart. What are you talking about? I've met someone else. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love you and all, but I just don't think this is gonna work out. What the hell? Please, don't say anything. It's better to end now before desire takes over. Just hold me for one last time. Uh, God damn well. it, just give me my damn money. I'm sick of you. Mr. Marconi, I have a problem. You were born with a problem. No, I wasn't. The thing is, my job's been getting me down lately. I'm being exploited, you know? There are always hundreds of orders that have to be delivered on their due date and in perfect condition. And do you know what the worst part is? I don't care. The customers, they're only worried about themselves. They never thank me or say, have a nice day. They treat me like dirt, you know? Like I have no feelings. They always say things like, the package is smashed, the package shouldn't drip. This is not the address you're looking for. Is it too much to ask that they just sign for their damn delivery and keep their smashed packages? Randall. Yes, Mr. Marconi? You work for the town's worst courier service, and you spend more time trying to think of ways to get out of work than you do actually working. Whoa, 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 Mr. Marconi, that's not entirely true. It is entirely true. Randall, you're like a son. <laughs> you know what that means, don't you? That if we made out, it would be considered incest? Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> your parents must feel like schmucks for feeding you and cleaning your cage so long. Thank you, Mr. Marconi. You're like the father I always wanted. This year, I'll make you a special card for Father's Day with macaroni and glitter. Oh, you wear me out, Hicks. You could learn something from that roommate of yours, Mortimer. Now, there's a real hard work. What are you talking about? The guy hasn't come out of his room for months. Mortimer is the perfect tenant. He keeps it down and never gives me any trouble. All you do is make my life miserable. Mr. Marconi, we already had this conversation, and I promised you, no more megaphone after 10 o'clock. And as far as I know, Mortimer doesn't even speak our language. Leave him alone. You should try and be more responsible, Hicks. Eh, do something with your life, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. By the way, you said you'd give me back my megaphone. I want my money now. You know, Mr. Marconi, there's this rumor spreading that you've got so much money that you don't know what to do with it all. What? Do I look like a rich man to you, Hicks? Well, now that you mention it, you kind of look like you should be living in a garbage can. Very funny, Hicks. You know what? One call and I can have you turned into fish food. Nah, I'm not really fond of marine fauna. But if there's one thing that's clear, it's you're a wealthy man. So you won't even notice if I don't pay you this month either. Hicks. Now that you mention Mortimer, he's the one that should have paid. Oh. Oh. I just had what alcoholics refer to as a moment of clarity. I gave my half to Mortimer last week. That's enough, Hicks. Your roommate is a busy man, so leave him out of your lives. Go back in there and fix this. I'm not moving from here until you pay up. All right, Mr. Marconi. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Mortimer, 
Could you slip your half of the rent under the door? Old Marconi was here. Now he's out in the hallway yelling, Red rum, red rum. <laughs> Mortimer, cut it out and give me the money or you're gonna wake up tomorrow with my head in your bed. And you'll be next. Cause when I tell him you've been writing Mrs. Marconi love letters, you're going down too, buddy. <laughs> I didn't get a single word of that. I think we made it clear with that one growl means no, two growls means yes. You just made me want to break down the door and stomp on your head. Wait a second. Three growls now? Dude, we said two means yes, one means no. But three? What's that all about? <laughs> Mortimer, I'll never understand this language of yours. Can we please go back to Klingon? Okay, so... Nothing there. Now it's... Behold the most important piece of furniture in the house. I'd be lost without it. How else would I enjoy the movies I downloaded? Thank God for unlocked Wi-Fi networks. <laughs> well, I could escape through the window, but that one doesn't lead to the fire escape. Hmm. What we got here? Ooh, the fire escape, huh? Yeah, good idea. I like that metallic noise they make. Makes me feel safe. <laughs> what the hell was that? Was that the fire escape? Maybe we should think this through. Although, I bet it's not as frightening as old Marconi's hairy vein. <laughs> Maybe it is. Judging by that noise, I'd say there's some scary-ass creature in that alley. Whoa, whoa, seriously. I'm relatively too young to die. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna die here. But at least I will look death in the eye and say, I'm not afraid of you! Okay, so... Okay, so I want to mix that and that. Wow, look at that. And I still have some wire left. Okay. <clears throat> what do we got down here? this over a stupid filthy cat well that's embarrassing luckily no one saw me except for the cat and mrs. Grozer of course okay. hello mrs. Grozer how's it going and how's mr. Grozer doing is his hip any better I'm truly sorry about the roller skate incident I should have known that pushing him down the stairs was not a good idea I normally tell people it was Mortimer Mrs. Grozer, may I come in? I need to get down to the street, but I can't get through my door. Can you hear me? God damn it, are you deaf or stuffed? Uh, I'll just have to go face this stupid cat. Do, 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 do. Ah! <laughs> Phew. Perfect. I got rid of that stinking cat and now the coast is clear. Things are looking up. You're cursed. Huh? You're cursed. Um, what now? Cursed. Cursed? So that wasn't my imagination after all. You're cursed. Aw, oh, man. Was that you in my ear all night? 
I had a hell of a night because of you. Worst night since I ate that three-year-old jar of mayonnaise. Wait till I get down yeah, there. I see that. You're cursed. That does it. No one curses Randall. <laughs> bye bye, Mrs. Grozer. Say hi to Mr. Grozer. <gasps> You're cursed. Shit. What are the odds? Whew, that was close. I feel like I'm gonna puke my heart out. Whew, this must be what freedom tastes like. You're cursed! Easy, easy. I haven't forgotten about you. Let me just check and make sure everything is where it should be, then I'll decide whether to face you or get the hell out of here. Just after <laughs> I throw a rock at your face or something. Why on earth would I pick up a broken flower pot from the floor? Just leave it there. I don't like rummaging through the garbage, but how can I say no to a dried out tube of glue? Carrying a trash can around. We're so, gonna... you're a bum, huh? And who are you? What? <clears throat> you don't even know I'm the victim of your nighttime screaming? I think you're mistaken. The cat went that way. You're the one I'm looking for, bum. Your days of cursing people are over. Wrong again. I am no bum. Of course you are. And with an obvious drinking problem, I'd say. Boy, you couldn't be more wrong. I'm a businessman, and I only drink energy drinks. Oh, well excuse me, Gordon Gecko. I didn't know this was your office. Be careful when you get out onto the street. You don't want that nice suit getting dirty. Aw, oh, low blow, kid. Running a business is no walk in the park, you know. If you want to be someone in life, you gotta start at the bottom. Yeah, well you got the edge there, because this is rock bottom. Besides, everybody knows drunk people always tell the truth. So if you say I'm a drunk bum that says he's not a bum, but really he is, wouldn't that be paradoxical, Mr. Smiley Pants? I don't want to rain on your parade or anything, but if I put the cursor over you, it says bum. Okay, maybe I'm a business bum. Are you interested in a retching cat? Oh boy, poor old man. The alcohol's pickled your brain. Listen. Your problem is that you haven't been with a girl in a long time, if ever. Am I right? Listen, bum, I've got two words for you. Shut the fuck up. They say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. But what of the man who possesses too much knowledge? Well, he won't end up living in an alley, that's for sure. So where did you learn that saying anyway? On a TV show or something? No. You mean yes? No. Oh, really? Because I think I heard that one on the scary door last week. I said no. Us bums don't watch sci-fi shows. Aha! <laughs> you just gave yourself away, old man. No. I, I don't think so. Okay, whatever. Take care, old man, and stay out of trouble. You don't want to end up getting grounded. We'll meet again. Can't wait. You're cursed! Well, you can't deny it now. You just said it. I heard you. Said what? Why are you torturing me like this? I didn't do anything. Not yet, but you will. Oh, God. I know you're kind. I have my own problems, too, you know. My boss and my landlord are boneheads, and they're both pissed at me. And if I don't deal with them soon, I might end up living down here with you. If knowledge is power and power corrupts, how will you? I never survive. Oh my god, those lame sayings again, really? <clears throat> Aren't you supposed to pay a copyright on them or something? Not me. Okay, great. So in summary, you're a bum and I'm cursed. Yes. Aha! Didn't you say you knew nothing about it? That was just an opinion. I think you're cursed and I can help you. Okay.
Look, I'm sorry. I don't accept help from demented old bums that yell stuff at people. That's gotten me into trouble before. Okay, but take my card at least. If you need any help, just call me. What? This? This is a rusty old razor blade. There's no phone number on it. Okay, dog. Here we go with the dog. Hey, it's a little chihuahua. Hmm, his name is on the collar. I think it's Barkley. <laughs> eh, just a guy reading the paper. Looks like he's pretty tied up in it. Uh, I'm not gonna I don't away. rummage through garbage anymore. Okay, video store. It's closed. What's wrong, buddy? You look pretty bummed. Oh, it's a mess. I'm working for less than slave wages, working on my day off. I have to deal with every backward ass fuck on the planet, and I'll get fired if I don't make a sale before the weekend. Hey, hey! Would you be interested in purchasing a set of Wondermatic products? Here's the most state-of-the-art technology. No, hey, sorry, I'm not interested. Listen, I'm late for work and I'm really not into listening to complete strangers whining. And as far as actually helping them, well, mm-mm. Oh, I see. <clears throat> okay then, well, have a nice day. Oh, look at those puppy dog eyes. Now I feel sorry for them. I said I felt so. Okay. There we go. Now it's in place. Alrighty. What we got here? Oh, a trash can. Right here. Hmm. Nothing interesting. Oh, I like the shirt though. Not a service. Okay. Well. Emergency railway helpline. What is your emergency? Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever told you you look just like the sea witch from The Little Mermaid? Oh, well, no. But it's good to know. Sayonara! Did I get that tube of glue? No, I didn't. I want to get that tube of glue. This way, here we go. I know I needed something. wanted to, I couldn't do it. The cap is stuck on. Oh, okay, so we do that. There you go. There you go. That one. Alrighty. <laughs> there we go. Ah, uh, I better not do that. 
This thing has already stolen my childhood and half my adolescence. Ta -da. Yoink. Please. Well, 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 what do we have here? Aren't you a little old to be jumping the gate? Listen, it's not what you think. Ah, oh, they always say that. It's not. Listen to me, Officer... Officer Murray. To protect and serve, I know your kind. Do you think you can get yourself out of this by playing dumb? Well? Why did you try to sneak in without paying? Da -da -da. Look, Murray, I'm a secret agent. I was going after a suspect. Didn't you see anything strange? Where were you between 9 and 10 a.m.? Seriously? Oh, I've dreamt of working for the Secret Service since I was a kid. Okay, at your command, sir. Now, how can I be of assistance? Well, it's kinda delicate. You understand, right? I have to be extremely discreet. So, can I trust you, Murray? Can I really put my faith in you? Of course, sir. I'm no idiot. I was trained by the best. Awaiting orders, sir. The mole people are back from the depths again. I need to get to the platforms as soon as possible. One of my snitches said they'd be there. Good lord, Murray, hurry up! You know what they're capable of. They're back? Well, we'll get them this time. Those stupid little mole people with their crawling and their digging. Unfortunately, we don't stand a chance on our own. They'd massacre us. We'll have to wait for reinforcements. You can't go anywhere until I finish the report. Oh, oh great. Don't tell me I have to wait for Murray to learn how to read. No way! I need to get out of here right now. If I don't make it to work today, my boss is gonna freak out on me. Okay, uh, lots of nice pictures there with him around the world. Let me pull the pin. Mm, it's really tight. Uh, let's Why? Go right. And get squashed? I don't think so. Here we go here. I'm not gonna walk around with that. Um. Holy macaroni! What an impressive globe you have here, Murray. That's my little one. <laughs> I've been to a lot of different countries. A little Murray figure for each of them. Okay. I'd rather not take it. It could be dangerous. That's kind of the point. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? No way. The extendable duck is for serious business only. I don't have anything else. Eh, I would mess it all up. Well, I kind of want it to. What? And get squashed? I don't think so. Okay. Let's try to go outside. Not so fast, boy. I said you can't leave until I'm done with your report. And I'm pretty clumsy and dyslexic when it comes to paperwork, so it'll be a while yet. But I'm late for work. You were already late, so a few more minutes won't make any difference. Now sit down and shut up. I need to concentrate. Man, I'm gonna be here till midnight. I gotta mm. find a way to get out of here, otherwise I'll lose my job. Hmm. That pin looks very strong. Hmm. It's a very impressive globe. I wonder how much it weighs. Hmm. Kind of like six or seven Whoopi Goldbergs. That's a lot of Whoopi Goldbergs. Oh. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, thanks, Matt. Now I have some cash. Oh, and your wedding ring. Okay, so what do I do here? Wire, maybe? That makes no sense. It has to be... That's just stupid. <clears throat> Newspaper, duck. Hmm. Eh, I would. Eh. Nah. Nah. I can't use the razor with that. Okay. I'm <clears throat> not really interested in them. Maybe a punch in the face would encourage him, but, nah, I don't know. Hmm. What? Hmm. That's there will be Goldbergs. Aha! The world is mine. No. <clears throat> oh, I don't want to talk to that him. Pin I think the pin looks very strong. There has to be... Eh. No? Okay. Hmm. This ring. Some leftovers from <clears throat> yesterday's sandwich. A pittance. That's Matt's wallet. I used those to wrap up my sandwich yesterday. A length of wire from the duck hanger. Maybe the batteries will come in handy later. Huh. Some battery. Life, job, career, television, eh. Yeah. Sure. Yes. <clears throat> Done it already. Do that, do that. Do that, okay. Oh. Hey there, Minnie Murray. You're mine now. Okay. Nope. It's not move. Let's see what happens. Oil pin. Okay. That globe sure does vibrate a lot. I'm not risking it. <clears throat> what? And get. Really? Dun dun dun! Can't stop you now. Okay, enough goof. Hello again. Could I please have my goddamn <clears throat> pass once and for all? Well, I'm not really sure, you little smart ass. I didn't think too much of your little glue prank. 
Listen, lady, I gotta go to work, and I don't think this is something that requires a police officer's intervention, right? Ah, uh, fine. Here's your stupid pass. Now scram! Yes! Randall wins. Alrighty. There's a Mission Express, so we're going down here. Stranger, what do you got to say? Nah, I wouldn't know what to say. Alright, let's go into work. Good morning, Vietnam! Well, look who's here. My star employee. My right-hand man. My lucky charm who seems to feel the need to remain incognito. Sometimes I wonder... When will he next grace us with his presence? Oh, please, let's not go through that again. You're upset because I'm always late. I can understand that. But it's all down to my orientation problems. In fact, I thought this was my North Vietnamese friend's bird shop. Ah, cut the crap, Hicks! Even my beloved ex-wife would be better at this job than you! It's almost midday, and this package should have been delivered to the annual koala convention hours ago! I have called you like five times, and this foreign guy who doesn't even speak English always picks up, and I always end up insulting him in all the languages I know. God knows I have been more than patient with you, Hicks! That's true, but spare me a little more of your patience, and I might just surprise you. For example, that foreign guy you mentioned is Hong. Surprised? Who Hong? Who the hell is Hong? Hong who? My Asian friend, you know, the guy from the bird shop. See, I gave him my business cell phone, and in exchange, I got a cage full of pigeons. Then I used the pigeons to shoot a slow motion action scene right down my block. Ah, oh, shut up! Please, don't yell at me like that. My landlord has already yelled at me this morning, and I'm so hungover right now. Oh, that reminds me. I need an advance. Are you serious? I can't believe it. Seriously? Um, didn't I make my, um, serious face? I'm sorry. Oh, where to begin? You remember when I told you to close on Friday night and I gave you the key? Ah, uh, now you're the one who's surprising me. Oh, yeah. Well, I had to call a locksmith to get that damn door open. And I had to pay a pajama fee for waking him up! So, shut up and give me that key! Well, hmm. I don't think I've seen any keys in my inventory. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now I'm getting the picture. So this is the part where I have to find the key to get the advance and... You lost the damn key?! I told you to guard it with your life! And I did. I swear on Super Hot Chick's voluptuous curves. How dare you even speak her name, you vile, shameless pig! Oh, that was way out of line, Mr. Emerson. I could be carrying a tape recorder and sue you, you know? But to be honest, I don't think I've seen a tape recorder in my inventory either. You dare to desecrate my most valued possession. Come on. All this because of a stupid key? Or was it made of platinum or what? Seriously, was it platinum? Because if it was, we have to find it. Forget the damn key! I'm talking about something I keep in my safe, Hicks! Do you mean that threatening letter you wrote to your ex-wife? I am talking about a first edition of the official Wonder Comics catalog. Published in 1972, with Super Hot Chick wearing all her classic little numbers. Now all I have left is the cover, which is covered in oil stains and smells like tuna! See? Now that kind of rings a bell. Come on, Mr. Emerson, what do you expect me to do? Another joke about my inventory? 
As I said on my resume, I'm a man with ambition and I always achieve my goals. A lovable rascal, if you will. If I need something, I take it. And honestly, I needed something to wrap my sandwich in. You can't deny that my complete honesty is another good quality to add to my resume, can you? Well, you'd better start updating that doodle napkin you call a resume, Hicks. You're fired! What? You mean just like that? What did I do? Get out! Whoa, whoa, come on, wait a second. At least you'll give me some compensation, right? I want my severance pay. You have cost me a lot of money, Hicks. Between the locksmith's bill, new locks, all the stuff you've stolen from the office, including a PC. Uh, but I told you, I needed to update my blog. It's not right to do that at work. I'm not done yet. Pens, calculators, the key to the office my father gave me on his deathbed. I knew it had some kind of sentimental value. See, I do pay attention. I'm still not done. I knew that too. Toilet paper, ink cartridges, light bulbs. I mean, why would you steal damn light bulbs? Mr. Emerson, allow me to ask you a question. Have you ever felt as if some kind of disturbed maniac was controlling you? Well, I have. I, 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 so I, I, I needed light bulbs to light up a... Uh... I don't care! You are out of control! And wrecking my catalog was really crossing the line, Hicks. Okay, fine. Just try running this business without me. You're still here. What? Now I can't even stand here minding my own business? What if I want something delivered? You know what, Hicks? I never went to Vietnam, but I took part in the Battle of Mogadishu. And believe me, I saw things there. Well, what a coincidence. That same weekend I spent the whole day killing things in a video game. See? We have something in common. I am seriously considering ripping your heart out, stuffing it into this packet, and mailing it to your mother. Oh, that's it. I quit. I can't work in these conditions. There's just too much hostility. Get the hell out of here! Get out! And don't you ever, ever come back! Okay, okay, easy, big fella. Oh, great, just great. How the hell am I gonna pay the rent now? I gotta find a way to make some cash. Ow. God damn it, Phil! What'd you do that for? You're such a grudge holder. I'll take that radio. What we got here? Nah. Yeah, that would be cool. Okay, so nothing there. Pop shop. Oh, that's money. Um, platforms. Oh, I'm gonna go back out. I'm guessing. I guess I need. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> oh no. Looks like a safe. Don't know. I don't have a job anymore. Good for you. Aloha. What could I pawn so I can get enough money for rent? I kinda need a lot of cash. What have you got? Well... Some pages from the 1972 Wonder Comics official catalog, including some pictures of Super Hot Chick in her classic little outfits, and with very few oil and tuna sticks. Uh, I don't think those are worth anything in that condition. This is a genuine subway pass. It allows you to travel freely around the city. Are you serious? Of course I am. I don't need that. This is an extendable duck hanger. I made it myself. Is it wooden? I have a lot of stainless steel hangers, made by yours truly. This awesome police officer figure? Uh, it's not as if it's Captain Red or anything. 
this great fake leather wallet that doesn't smell like wet dog? Yeah, I can smell it from here. Not interested. That ring, though. Hey, hold it. I don't remember giving you permission to sniff around my inventory. Easy, kid. It kind of comes with the territory. Well, that ring isn't exactly mine. I just wouldn't feel comfortable selling it because, you know, it... Let me get this straight. That's the only thing you have that's actually worth something, and you don't want to sell it? Well, I mean, it's just that it, it, it's... You know... I think I'd better keep it. I, I know it's none of my business, but don't you think that guy might be a criminal? I hope so. Don't you think he might be the kind of guy that, you know, could steal something? I guess. But he's my best supplier. Now, I just found this in my grandma's old basement. It's of great sentimental value. Wow, that basement's a gold mine. I already have one of them, but I'll give you a nice wad for it. See? I love that guy. Okay, so I don't think I have any more business here then. Thanks anyway. Oh wait, kid, don't just walk out like that. Why don't you have a good look around your place? Maybe you have some useless junk I might be interested in. Alright, just checking something real quick. There we go. Looks like it's all good. It does seem like you really need the money. Finally, it seems like I'm getting better at making faces. I think I know where I can find some junk you might like. I'll check it out. Hmm. Uh, no money. Okay. We're going to the sewers. Who knows what kind of dangers lurk down in the sewer? Killer crocodiles, mutant turtles. Hmm. I guess we'll never know. Oh no. I guess I gotta run back to my uh, apartment here. Who's on how to use the ring in the office? Okay. Interesting. Damn it! Old Marconi's still here. I'll have to find a way to sneak past him. Hmm. I wonder if I can go back up the way I came. I can't use it anymore. And even if I could, I wouldn't. I almost died up there. Uh, mm -mm. Come here, boy. Nope. Okay, can't go that way. You know. Nothing there. Pigeons. Damned wick. Sure, sure. I understand. E excuse me, sir. What exactly do you mean when you tell me to jump up my own ass? He hung hmm. up. I shouldn't say South Park. Oh, up top? Yeah. That's a thing for a donations if I ever get any. What's up, buddy? I'm Randall. Um, hello, Randall. What's with the long face? Are you laughing at me? <laughs> of course. Have you seen you? Well, I'm a Wondermatic product salesman. And I'm having, like, the worst day. That's why I'm so bummed. Are you happy now? Now and always. So, yeah. no sales at all? Just my watch to pay my electric bill. Well, that watch belonged to my grandfather, who was shot down over Hanoi. And then Captain Coon said to shove it up his ass. Yeah, 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 tragic. Let's talk about puppies. I love puppies. 
Yeah. My little Susie has been begging me for a puppy for months now. And I don't really know what to tell her. I can't even pay the mortgage anymore. Okay, suddenly talking about puppies is getting me down. And I refuse to talk about ponies. So, what is your problem exactly? Problem is that I'm the worst salesman One Dramatic Industries has ever had. It's been two months already since I made my last sale. I can't even sell the cheapest, most basic products. I'm such a loser. Oh, come on, man. Don't be like that. You know what you should do? You should shit or get off the pot. But what you shouldn't do is just sit around there all day complaining about how miserable you are. It's not that simple, you know? If only I could find some rich loser and sell him the complete deluxe set, my problems would be over. At least for a while. Hmm. If you're looking for some chump with money, my landlord's a real bonehead. And word is he's sitting on piles of cash. Are you serious? Yeah. Although they say that Morlocks are plotting a large-scale offensive. So don't take that as gospel. But is your landlord the gullible type? Well, I owe him three months' rent and he still hasn't kicked me out. But I believe there are some father-son issues there, so I really don't know what to say. Sounds like a shot. My last chance, maybe. Could you give me his number? I don't mind giving it to you, but I warn you, the guy's a cranky old bastard. You can tell that even his hairy shoulders are angry when you talk to him. I don't care. I just gotta try. Well, it's your funeral. It's 555-1013. Oh, and uh, don't call him when there's a full moon. They say that he gets a little out of hand. I'm calling him right now. Good morning, sir. Do you have a minute? I would like to talk to you about the advantages of our wonderful... Get a real job, I failed again. I don't know what I was thinking. Hmm. Here, let me try. Are you <laughs> serious? I'm always serious. Except when I find guys I can take advantage of. Then I just can't help lying. I don't really know how to take that. Oh, come on, give me the phone. You got nothing to lose. Well, that's true enough. Here, do whatever you want. Showtime. Good morning, sir. Would you be interested in the purchase of a brand new set of Wondermatic products? Very emphatic. Thought so. I'm sure I sure. Showtime. Are you still there in the hall waiting for me? Hicks, is that you? Yep, Hicks speaking. I sneaked out of the apartment and I still ain't got your money. How do you like that? Oh, come on, Mr. Marconi. I was hoping you'd forgiven me by now. I mean, I'm appealing to your sense of common decency. But then, maybe now I'm figuring that you don't really have any, based on how you dress. I could say the same about your pot belly. In fact, I just did. just started talking about kicking my ass. He'll be on that for a while now, so here. I, uh... Just talk to him a little. It's not that hard. Uh-huh. I understand. Uh-huh. I understand. Sure.
The world would be a much better place if scum like you would just disappear. <laughs> I thought I'd find a use for this crap. Really? Uh, and if I get the deluxe set right now, you'll throw in an electric toothbrush, right? It sounds good. So listen, uh, oh, if I want the basic set as well, uh, I guess I'd get some kind of discount, huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> yeah, what about the payment plan? Wonderful. Yeah, okay, uh, one more question. Is there much difference between the dismembermatic 8,000 and the 9,000? Yeah, Wonderful. Of course. <laughs> Thank you for your kindness, sir. It was a real pleasure doing business with you. And don't worry, you won't regret going for the three-pack deal. No, no. Thank you. Have a nice day, sir. Bye-bye. I love it when a plan comes together. Did you see that? I sold him the basic set, the deluxe set, and even the classic set. I can't believe he fell for it. The last one is completely useless. Let's celebrate. Maybe some other day, buddy. I got things to do. I mean, more important things. At least let me give you something. I couldn't have done this without you. I've always got time for free it's stuff. It's a set. Although, is it poison? Because it wouldn't be the first time someone's offered me poison. And if it is, I uh, don't want it. No, it's not poison. Who do you think I am? Here. I hope this comes in handy. Well, thanks, man. I'll see you around. Oh, the hammer. At the pawn shop. Da, 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 da. At the pawn shop. Da, 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 da. At the pawn shop. I wonder if I can use a hammer on the gun machine. I'm not gonna destroy. Nope, guess not. Okay. Here. Are you sure you don't want a subway pass? Positive. Go bring me that junk you were talking about. Or don't bother coming back at all. Time is money, kid. Okay, so this way. The junk. Here you go. Here are some rare, authentic pieces from the exclusive world of urban subculture. Legend says they're bathed in a mysterious aura. Let's take a look at this pile of garbage. This console is as good as new. Advanced North Korean technology. Very educational, but if you make a mistake, it shocks you. Careful though, all the questions are in Korean. First time I played, I was like the Indian in Cuckoo's Nest for three days. But believe me, those shocks really liven you up in the morning. Better than coffee, I'd say. If I need something to help me liven up in the morning, I drink Mercury Cola. This is the trophy I won after beating a guy, whose name was 8-Ball by the way, in a pool game in Wisconsin. Oh, that was a tough one, let me tell you. It was without a doubt the most extreme experience I've ever had. Like a chess game that lasts for days. And believe me when I say that when we were done, we both got banned from Massachusetts for life. You said the game was in Wisconsin. It started in Wisconsin, but we ended up in Massachusetts. Just imagine the competitive skills that would require. There were betrayals, firearms, a high-speed ride on a train without brakes, and in the dying seconds of the game, we had to defuse a bomb on the pool table. It was definitely something to remember, all right? Okay, man. But if you don't have any paperwork to back up your little story, then that's just a common eight ball. 
can I offer you a once-in-a-lifetime deal on this one-of-a-kind lava lamp? The lava is from Krakatoa and Vesuvius. Shaken, not stirred. Sorry, I already have like nine of those. Ever heard of Skelextric? Unless that piece of track belonged to Lewis and Clark, don't even bother. It sure did. Exploring is a taxing job. They used to play with it to break up the monotony. Me? Wrong. Scalextric wasn't even discovered until 1846 in those ancient Aztec ruins. Keep trying, kid. Is that uh, it? Don't you have an ace up your sleeve? Uh, did I mention with this pass you can ride around the whole city for free? Ah, I'm sorry, but the only thing you have that's worth anything is that ring. Couldn't you give me something for the lava lamp? I guess I could give you something. And what about for the Korean console? Maybe a little? Maybe. Then problem solved. Some money plus a little money equals a respectable sum of money, right? That is true, kid. But consider this for a second. You said you needed a lot of money, and I can give you more than a lot of money for that ring. Are you telling me I've just been wasting my time with all this crap? See? You just said it's all crap. Now the ball is pretty much in your court. You decide. Damn it, Hicks! I want my goddamn money, and I want it now! Uh, that's too much. I, I, I can't sell the ring. What about Matt? He'd be devastated. He'll never know, idiot. He doesn't even know you stole it in the first place. No, it doesn't feel right. Listen to me, pal. You better sell that freaking ring and pay me already, or I swear to Lucifer, I'll turn your life into a daily hell. Come on, Mandel. Don't let yourself be taken in by him. You know you can't do that to me. Even you have your limits. Shut that trap, you sissy! The grown-ups are talking, and if you <laughs> dare to come between me and my money, I will piss your ass like a goddamn meatball! Oh, heavens! That bastard has a pitchfork, and all they gave me was this harp. I demand a flaming sword! Come on, come on, there's no need to fight about it. I will impale you and slowly roast you <laughs> on a simmering heat, you filthy maggot! Fucking hell! This motherfucker is serious! Randall, sell the fucking ring already. It's no big deal. It only cost me a Dorito. Give that damn bastard his fucking money and let's put a stop to this shit already. Then I'll do it. <laughs> Are you one of those guys that whenever they have to make an important decision, they see little angels and demons? Bingo. And I'm gonna do what the angel said. I'm selling the ring. That same thing happens to me since I started drinking Mercury Cola. But I don't see angels, just demons. Creatures from hell that tell me to hurt people and to burn things. But don't worry, man. I'll learn to ignore them. Let's get back to business, shall we? I'm sure glad you wisened up, kid. You have the ring? Here. And you can keep the box, too. Well, thank you. You know, it's weird. I don't know what's so special about this ring. I have no idea of its real value. But I'd be willing to pay an obscene amount of cash for it. Well then, go ahead. What's stopping you? Here you go. Wow! Any time, man! If I ever find another one, I'll know where to come. There is no other, kid. There is no other. Well, uh, I'm not sure if you're in the middle of some kind of mercury cola induced hallucination right now. So I'm just gonna take off with my wad of cash and, uh, you know, I guess I'll see you around. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a uh, cursed ring. There's a lot of nice stuff in there. Oh, and Deponia is I was a really a good normal series. Day going on lousy. And out of the blue, Lady Luck just pops out of nowhere and French kisses me and feels me up. Who shall I go slap with this wad of bills first? Marconi, Emerson, my kindergarten teacher who told me I'll never amount to anything. Hmm. This is Donald Trump speaking. I'm off to a private party in Mr. Hefner's place, so please, make it quick. Randall? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Sally, what's wrong? Randall? It's Matt! Oh my god. Sally, come on, you're scaring me. What's going on? You need to come to Matt's place right now. But, 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 but what happened? I, um, did uh, someone steal his wallet or, you know, something? Randall, 
I don't want to tell you this on the phone. But what's wrong with Matt? I, uh, what did he do? Matt is... Oh my god. I need you here right away. What? <laughs> Sally, d d don't hang up on me like that. God damn it. I have to go to Matt's place and find out what's going on. Even if it ends up being really disappointing like 3D movies. Huh, okay. Let's go to Matt's. Oh, go down there, dumbass. Matt's over there. All the loading screens, all the loading screens. Wow, what a party. What the hell happened here? Can't get to Matt's place, the whole area is cordoned off. Huh. What we got here? Good morning. How's business, sir? Well, I'm hanging in there. Looks like it's picking up a bit. Oh, good for you. Do you have any idea what happened here? No, but who cares? It's always the same story. Robberies, shootings, pink syrup time bombs. Dude, what the hell are you talking about? What a giant marshmallow man. <laughs> Those are my favorite sagas, the one you just mentioned. You're alright, you're cool. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. Don't make me put a piece of orange peel between my teeth and hunt you down until you confess all your sins. <laughs> okay, I admit it. I'm crazy about movies that are at least 15 years old. Are there any other kind? I know, right? <laughs> okay. Given that you haven't asked me yet, I'll just go for it. Can I have a hot dog with extra everything, please? Thank you. I'd love to, but I'm afraid that's impossible. I ran out of gas, and I need a new cylinder to cook on. Well, don't you have a replacement? Don't you think if I had one, I would be using it already? I don't know. I really don't understand the limits of human stupidity. Neither do I. Why don't you just get another one? I wish I could, but I can't take my eyes off that Vina gobbling cop. He's single-handedly putting my kid through college. I see, but uh, you know what? How are you gonna sell him something if you don't have anything to sell? Ah, uh, you don't get it, boy. That cop there is coveted by every bastard in the hot dog vendor guild. If I lower my guard for even a second, Abe Froman, the sausage king from Chicago, is liable to swoop in and steal him away. Well, oh no, it's Abe Froman! I'm wrong, but isn't just standing there with no goods to sell really bad for business? Uh, yeah, when you put it like that, it does sell pretty bad, yeah. Uh, I think you need to get a new cylinder ASAP. Believe me, I can hear Murray's guts rumbling from here. Hey, wait a second. Did Froman send you? He's trying to edge me out of my monopoly on that Pac-Man-like hot dog gobbler, isn't he? Well, over my dead body. Well, given your movie preferences, I think I'll just say, we came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Well said, my friend. Now I know I can trust you. I would have also accepted he slimed me. Okay, so now we're friends. Can I have a hot dog, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I still have that little gas problem. But now that we are friends, I can trust you with the mission of getting me a new gas cylinder. It's a dangerous quest, steeped in mystery. Oh, so now that we're friends, I can do your dirty work for you. I get it. Exactly. Just tell me where to go. Let's get this done already. God. Have you heard of Mel's Pawn Shop? Sure, good old Mel. Now I see what you meant by a dangerous quest. But hey, why the hell do you buy your gas in a pawn shop anyway? Well, Mel has good prices, and he offers a quick, efficient, and personal service. Oh, I got you now. Stolen gas, eh? Yeah, probably. Okay, no problem. I just made a deal with him a little while ago. Just give me a minute. Okay, so... Oh, okay. Go back to Mel's. Mel's Pawn Shop. Beware of Mel.
Okay, let's go back inside. Show this to Mel's. Um, excuse me, Mel. Can I talk to you for a second? I'm with a customer right now. I'll be with you in a minute. That's okay. I just wanted to, uh. He just told you to wait a minute. He'll make him tell you again, or I'll tell you again. Whoa, that, that won't be necessary. Can you give me that deal with the riffs? Sure. Right on time. What the hell? You he shrunk down. In fact, I think I should get going if I want to make it. What time is it? I don't know. But relax, man. You still have plenty of time. What about the competition? Is everything under control? The Turnbulls, the Orphans, and the Furies are locked down. I don't think the Lazies are gonna be a problem. Then can you give me that deal with the Riffs? Sure. Right on time and at a very good price. In fact, I think I should get going if I want to make it. What time is it? I don't know. But relax, man. You still have plenty of time. What about the competition? Is everything under control? The Turnbulls, the orphans. Then can you give me that deal with the riffs? Sure. Right on time and at a very good price. I can't take In it. In fact, no I much. think I should get going if I want to make it. What time is it? I don't know. Let's talk to Mel first. I don't want to of time. What about the competition? Is everything under control? Let's talk to Mel. The Turnbulls, the Orphans, and the Furies are locked down. I don't think the Lazies are going to be a problem. Nah, he's not going to listen. Then can you give me that deal with the riffs? Sure. Right on time. Huh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do there. I'm gonna wait for him to be done. Oh no, can I go on the side? Uh, hey, Mr. Emerson, I think we should have a word about the radio incident. Was it really necessary to throw it at my head? Get the hell out of here! Get out! And don't you ever, ever come back! All right, all right, easy. I think I should get going if I, I want to make it. What time is it? I don't know. But relax, man. You still have plenty of time. I'd love friends. to walk around town blasting away what about the competition? Ghosts. It's a shame is I don't have the control. The Turnbulls, the Orphans, and the Furies are locked down. I don't think the oh, Lazies sure. are going to be a problem. Uh, and can you give me that can I do with the door? Sure. Oh. Right there's a lot of stuff in there. Pin and nut? Nope. I don't think so. I've got the cylinder, the receipt. Hammer. The at the pin. I don't have a nut. I have a nut, so I need to find a nut. Oh, uh, there? I'm think. Okay, so how do I get the nut off of that? I don't think that's gonna. Nope. Okay. Gotta find a nut. I don't see a nut. Can't go that way. No. I need to. Sh okay. A couple of pieces. There we go. Huh, fits perfectly. There you go, I got it. Can you give me that deal with the riffs? Sure, right on time and at a very good price. In fact, I think I should get going if I want to make it. What time is it? I don't know, but relax, man. You still have plenty of time. That makes sense, but I need to fit it in. 
has everything under control. The time boats, the orphans, and the furies are locked down. I don't think the lazies are gonna be a problem. Looks like it fits. Then can you give me that deal with the rest? Let's wind up this. Sure. Right on time. I got a very good price. In fact, I think I should... Okay, it's time. The shipment is about to arrive. Better leave now. See ya, Mel! <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Okay. Okay, Mel. Hello again, Mel. Hey, uh... Randall? Randall. I knew that. So how can I help you? You have any more rings you want to sell me? Uh, actually, I'm here on behalf of someone else this time. Okay, shoot. I, I don't even know the guy's name, actually. It's this hot dog vendor I just met, but, well, you know me. I'm always a good Samaritan, trying to help where I can. Actually, I don't know you at all. But whatever. Go on. Uh, anyway, so this guy came here this morning to buy a new gas cylinder. It turns out the one you sold him is completely empty. Really? Do you have the receipt? <laughs> of course I do. I mean, well, what kind of man do you think I am? Uh, one who demands stuff when he doesn't even have a receipt? It wouldn't surprise me. Here, hmm. take it. Okay. Jeez, I don't know how that cylinder got empty. I'll fill it up tonight before I close. You can take that one next to the clock. That's a new one. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Okay, so I can take that one. I'll just leave the empty one. Cool. Alright, back to Hot Dog Man. Nope, wrong one. No. Riding on the railroad, 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 Thanks, boy. Man, your hot dogs better be exquisite, because I had to jump through hoops to get that cylinder. And I missed a very important phone call. Shut up. Check this out. Smell that gummy cops close to this that flaring and the smell of my hot dogs. It's like something innate. Pure instinct. Yeah, looks like he's coming over. Looks like a charm. Well, here. Take this as a thank you. A dog with extra everything. Now that I have to get to work, my instincts tell me that the specimen is gonna make a run on my cart any time now. I'd better get ready. Okay, sure. See you then. Alrighty, so I got a hot dog. Uh. Huh. Uh, excuse me. I'd like to get into the building, if I may. Do I look like a CSI agent to you? Go talk to that cop over there. I'm gonna talk to the cop. Lieutenant Hicks, special unit. You can go, Murray. I'll take it from here. Sorry, boy. I'm not that stupid. You sure? I'm afraid this is not your lucky day. We just can't let any random guy off the street in here. Damn it! I'm not just anyone, I'm your friend Randall. <clears throat> what the hell happened to you? You used to be so cool. Well, I... Murray, come on. We can't just ignore what happened in that dank underground room. There was something there. Something more than just words. You even pushed your nightstick up against me. But now we need to act like that never happened, okay? We have to move on. That dank underground room was my beloved office, you sicko. And I'm starting to think you're to blame for its total destruction. But what about your words, Murray? A few hours ago you wanted to know everything about me, and now suddenly you're not interested anymore? What's wrong with you? I was just filling in your police report. I needed to know all your details. Jesus Christ, that's the lamest excuse ever. Fifteen-year-old girl could flirt better than you. <laughs> yeah. 
That offends me, Murray. I thought there was this connection between you and me, but now I see you were just leading me on the whole time. I only have a connection with my barbecue, a cold soda, and a handful of German wieners. Huh, <laughs> that thing about the wieners? What? No! I meant... <laughs> yeah, okay. German wieners. I get it, Murray. Uh, no, look, I'm not judging. Get lost! You know what? I'll try reverse psychology. I don't want to get in there, Murray. Don't you dare try letting me in there. I don't want to go. You almost got me, boy. Pity you said you were going to try reverse psychology. Ah, crap. I was actually talking to my homie behind the fourth wall. Just ignore that wall and get out of my sight. Come on, Officer Murray. I have a close friend in there, and he's in trouble. And you know what? You're not the heartless, unscrupulous type of cop. Why don't you just keep this little wad of money and just step aside? You're only capable of showing me respect when you're trying to bribe me. You're pathetic, Randall Hicks. I knew you knew my whole name. I saw a little spark in the eyes the first time I said it. The first time you said your name was Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay, but you made the same face. I can't waste any more time with you, boy. Are you breaking up with me? We've got a serious situation inside, boy. It's no laughing matter. So do the law a favor and go home. No kid. I'm about to get half serious here and ask you what's going on. I can't give you details, but as far as I know, the incident occurred at Matthew Griffin's apartment. That's him! Th 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 that's my friend Matt. W what the hell happened? I, I don't quite know, but I can only allow people that are really close to him in. Like a relative. Well, I, I'm his best friend. I mean, his, his girlfriend just called me and told me to come. I don't know, boy. You hurt my feelings before, you know. And taking into account all the relevant facts, I really can't trust you. So, no, you can't go in. I don't believe you. Get the hell out of here. Murray, like that great wise Austrian man said, <clears throat> I'll be back. <laughs> Thinking about that Austrian muscle man turned you on a bit, didn't it, Murray? Come on, look at you. Get the hell out of here. Beat it, Scram. That's an order. I don't ever want to see your face again. Okay, fine. God damn it. If only there was a phone in my inventory I could call Sally. But no, it's just a narrative resource, so it only rings when the wheel of fate decides so. This sucks. I can only receive phone calls in this stupid game. Well, get used to it, Randall. Although it doesn't really matter. I don't even have any credit anyway. I haven't topped up in years. I guess I just like to blame all my problems on video games. I need to find a way to sneak in. And, uh, why am I talking to that fourth wall punk again? Get out! Go away! You're ruining my life! Although, since they've been here, I've come into an absurd amount of money. What the hell? My life now has all this adventure in it, but that's probably because I lost my job. Money helps dealing with the pain, though. Hey, wait! Okay, I'll give you another chance, but just don't blow it this time. <laughs> I didn't blow anything. He might. I know Murray is all about hot dogs, but I don't... Hey, what do we got here? Spring, too much money. Uh, it's no use. We need to find a way to. Oh, wallet. Um, am I crazy or is this Matthew Griffin's wallet? Let me see. Where did you find this? He asked me to hold it for him last night. Like I said, I'm his best friend. That works for me. Go in and have a word with Sergeant Kramer. He'll want to question you. Am I in trouble for being friends with that maniac? It's just procedure. Like that little talk we had in my office. What? Are you trying to say you weren't hitting on me? Who are you trying to convince, Murray? Me or yourself? Just leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of figured as much. Hey, did somebody call for Ghostbusters? Oh, God. Randall, you're here. What the hell happened here? Where's Matt? He's... 
with the cops in the kitchen. And what are the cops doing here? What do you think? He really messed up this time. What a jerk. I'm not talking to him ever again. You mean this is even worse than that legendary machete <clears throat> fight he set up between the chimps and the orangutans in 2003? Definitely. Really? Don't forget one of the chimps bit the Coast Guards and gave them all rubella. I mean, at least it looked like rubella. Randall, this time, Matt has made me seriously reconsider our relationship. You mean this is even bigger than when he made the biggest puke omelet in the world? Well, he swore that one would feature in his epitaph, but this time there are no words to... There are no words. You mean he actually went through with his plan? He really froze a living being in his Frigomatic 9000? Not yet. But I keep having these nightmares where I open the fridge and he's right there, cryogenically frozen with a note that says, I want to see a future ruled by machines. Yeah, that sounds like something he would do, and I'm sick of this. I don't want to have to deal with stuff like this for the rest of my life. Well, not quite. Just until he freezes himself. He's really obsessed with that future ruled by machines thing, and any kind would do. The one where machines use people as batteries, the one where machines use people to create Soylent Green, the one where machines use people as test subjects, you know, with portals, cubes, and buttons. I can't take it anymore. I'm a good person. I don't deserve this. Why don't you go to the kitchen, check out his masterpiece. I have a lot of thinking to do. Okay. Are you okay? Do you want an extendable duck hanger? It might cheer you up. Just go to the kitchen. I think Matt needs a friend now, more than ever. Kitchen. Just what the, what the fuck is going on here? And who the hell are you? My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Are you threatening me, boy? <laughs> or are you a dumbass who thinks he's a smartass? Do you think you're funny? <laughs> no, sometimes I just wish my name was a little more exotic. Who would you rather hang out with? A Randall? or an Inigo Montoya. I guess you're here because Officer Murray thought you might be of help. Listen, just because you danced your way around the incompetent barbecue lover doesn't mean you can do the same with me. You're gonna answer my questions or I'm gonna break your nose with my fist and tell everyone you tried to attack me. <laughs> That's right, I'm one of those cops. Come on, Sergeant Kramer, give the boy a break. Mind your own business, Ned. We're just taking photos and looking for fingerprints. I'll handle this, punk. And then he wonders why we never call him when we go out for a drink. Fuck <laughs> you, like I'd go to one of your stupid girly parties where you light scented candles from the body shop and, and wax each other's private parts all the while giggling and sharing your deepest secrets. Oh, so you're the one trying to be funny now. But I believe that thing in the oven is my friend's body, and to be honest, the only thing I can think of right now is that you know way too much about stuff that goes on in slumber parties. Look, maggot. You better tell me who you are and what you're doing here, or else you'll be spending the night in the cells where you'll come to be known as Susan. It's your choice. <clears throat> Look, I'm Randall Hicks, and this is my best friend's apartment. I'm here because his girlfriend called me. My favorite color is orange, I like spring rolls on rainy days, I hate peas in movies that copy other movies, and if I find a tortoise lying upside down in the desert, I guess I'd eat it because I'd be hungry after wandering through the dunes. Happy now? You can check it on your Voight Kampf, my friend. It's all true. You say you're Matt Griffin's best friend, Mr. Hicks? Is that your final answer? I'm only asking because Mr. Griffin mentioned you in his suicide note. Then it's official? That corpse is Matt's? His girlfriend identified the body. Sally? B -b but she's the one that just called me. I, I I talked to her and she never mentioned he was dead. The girl is pretty shaken up. Somehow she's refusing to accept that her boyfriend's dead. That's called the denial stage. I know it is, Ned. 
but it's the first time I've seen a girl yelling at her boyfriend's corpse and then telling him he'd better clean up the mess. If you're done with your little chit-chat, I'll carry on questioning the suspect. Whoa, 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 suspect? But you said there was a suicide note. Yeah, there is. But honestly, you don't come off very well in the note, Mr. Hicks. So, uh, what does it say exactly? You'd really love to know what your buddy wrote in his note about you, wouldn't you? So you'll know if you're implicated or not, huh? Look, friend, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I I've been at work all day. And what exactly do you do for a living, friend? I I'm a delivery guy at Emerson Express, uh, although... A little hesitant there, Sonny. Will Emerson confirm your alibi? The truth is he fired me this morning. He kicked me out, you know, but but it, that was over an unrelated oily issue. I mean, nothing to do with this at all. Oh, what a shame. Now you won't be able to keep saving for those beautiful leather boots with fringes and golden rivets yep, you love so much. Hey, how did you know about that? Come on, sweet cheeks, tell me more. What did you do after you got fired? I, uh, also I, an, uh I went looking for a new job. Oh, yeah? Uh, Abe well, from uh, Abe's Odyssey. So we got Abe's Odyssey that uh, I don't know what that one is. I went around trying in all the sex shops I frequent, but no luck so far. Interesting. So, you're a suspect and a pervert. A pervert? Listen, officer, I don't know what you think they sell in sex shops, but I'll give you a tip. If you want to spice up your marriage, buy your wife a Scepter-Matic 9000. If you're single, get yourself a love doll. You look like you may need some of that stuff anyway. Ooh, look, the little kitty is showing her claws. Don't play with fire, numbnuts. You might end up getting burnt. Uh, y yes sir. I I I'm sorry. That's more like it, kitty cat. <laughs> Who do you think I am, your boyfriend? Uh, what? Don't you ever whisper in my ear like that again. Uh, yes, sir. Don't let him push you around like that. People should show you some respect after what you did for that poor duck in the park. Ladies, please. Some of us police officers are still on duty and trying to get some work done around here. Do you mind telling me why the hell you had the dead guy's wallet? Coincidentally, I found this on the street on my way here. Oh, I'm sorry. By that calm look on your face, I guess you're expecting me to buy that. Good God, boy. You think you're dealing with Murray here? You obviously don't get it. The fact that you normally talk to idiots doesn't mean that I'm one of them. So now, if you don't mind, please tell me, what the fuck are you doing with the dead guy's wallet? Oh God, I told you, I found it on the street on my way here. And as long as you can't prove me wrong, I'm afraid you'll have to believe it. <sighs> Congratulations, kid. You've actually succeeded in making me sick of this side of you, for now. So. Do you mind if I take a look at that suicide note now? I don't mind smelling your fear, if that's what you're asking. Um... Relax, boy. Your name is in that note, so you have the right to read it. You could say it was this poor bastard's last will and testament, but I'll tell you something. When I read it, I couldn't help but think that Mr. Griffin's best friend stole his girlfriend from him. And that doesn't put you in a very good light, Mr. Hicks. I, uh, well, I, I mean, I guess we're really not that close, you know? I mean, his real best friend is a boy from Nepal. I mean, they used to chat online. You should probably start talking to him first, in Nepal, ASAP. Don't think I'm done with you yet, Susan. The note's there on the fridge. You want to read it? Go ahead. But I'm watching you. What does say here? To whoever reads this, I've stared death in the face many times. I'm fully aware that I have done some questionable things in my life. I know that, but still, I will never be able to fully understand why I'm doing this. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. People blinded by laser beams at a Spinal Tap concert, attack ships on fire off the coast of Orion, and I know I'm probably going to hell for this, but 
I can't do anything but accept my fate. I'm taking my life with the Stovomatic 9000 my dear mother gave me because honestly, I don't think freezing myself cryogenically to face a future run by machines is possible yet. My reasons can't be put into mere words. I feel so empty. The very air that I breathe has been taken away from me, the most beautiful thing I've ever had. And I believe that the person responsible for this treacherous act is my best friend. And under these circumstances, I just cannot go on living in this world anymore. You see us as you want to see us. A brain, an athlete, a basket case, a princess, and a criminal. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Hey, his name's not in there. Let me take the matches, though. Hey, what do you think you'd- oh, okay, here. You got it. Well, what do you make of the note? Could it be any clearer that it's your fault he killed himself? Sergeant Kramer, I'm pretty stressed out right now. And now I don't I know when if Matt saw the ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. We did everything together. I'm sorry, but I just don't feel like playing good cop, bad cop with you anymore. Hold it right there. I know you're ilk. Face it. You're a neo-maxi zoom dweeby who thinks he can take what he wants when he wants it. You got no respect for the law, your friends, or the person playing this game. Plus, I don't like your face. There. I said it. I'm not finished with you yet, Hicks. This time, John Wayne does not walk off into the sunset, ha ha, with Grace Kelly. That was Gary Cooper, you jerk. Don't push your luck, Susan. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? No, but one time in band camp, I stuck a flute in my... Okay, enough! Do you have a car? Why? So you can give me a ticket now and tow it away? I just don't like to see young ladies walking home after dark. Officer Murray will drive you home in a police car. Murray, get your flabby ass in here. <laughs> Sergeant, I told you, my buttocks look that way because of a genetic glandular problem, so it's really embarrassing when you... Shut your pie hole, Murray, and take this punk home. Uh, yes, sir. And take the dead guy's girlfriend, too. Miss... Miss Thompson already left. And why the hell didn't you tell me before? I tried, but you started yelling before I could say anything. Do you know what this is, Marie? This is a communication problem. And I think the only way to fix it is not having to hear your stupid voice ever again. So from now on, whenever you have to tell me something, you will just write it down and hand it to me. Understood? Now get out of here. Take the boy with you. Yes, sir. What did I just say? Huh. Okay, this is you, kid. But Murray, I told you to take me to a strip club. Sergeant Kramer told me to take you home. And according to our files, this is your current address. And you always just blindly obey what the guys tell you? You're too good, Murray. You've got to learn to get wild once in a while. It's my duty, son. Now get going. You'll always be the life and soul, Murray. You know that? Okay, let's go back inside. Well, almost. Sure, there's nothing in here. I don't think there is. Bedroom. Whoo, boy, this was some day. I lost my job, yet I made more money than I have ever seen. I lost my best friend, but I seem to have made a ton of new friends on the police force. I'll tell you, it's been a real roller coaster. I'll be happy to put this day behind me. Ah, Mr. Sandman. Bring me a dream, ba 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 ba. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Da 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 da. Eh? 
Okay, it's a new day. Let's face it with our head held high and our pockets full of cash. Okay, so I got all our items. Cool. Alrighty, I'm gonna save. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end it there. That's about two hours for day one. And that seems like a good time to stop the stream. I really appreciate all of you coming to watch. And I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you, Flame and Jedi. And I will see you next time.